What's up, weirdo? She Tree Surgeon here, about to embark on another adventure, baby. And with so many adventure bikes at my disposal, from Ducati Multistradas to a purpose-built adventure sportster, my mighty gold wing, even the milk toast Pacific Coast, what machine do we choose to ride? Well, the mighty silver wing, the one and only Turd Ferguson. When it comes to cross-country ventures, there's none that's done it better. 500 cc's of pure fury. Let's hit the road, baby. Well, surprising no one, the meetup time was midnight, and so, well, actually, uh, it's going to be midnight. The meetup time was 11.30, and I'm still running late. Huh, shocker. Oh, my gosh, the wind is whipping something fierce, and uh, again, in the vein of uh, my usual level of preparedness, with this wind whipping everywhere, it looks like it might be rain, but uh, I haven't even checked the forecast. We're just setting it, baby. <laughs> Balls to the wall, letting it all hang out in the breeze. What's the worst that could happen? We don't need to check no weather. I mean, I hope I don't need to check the weather, but let's rock and roll. Oh my gosh, I changed and checked the oil. I gotta check the weather too? When does it end? Hitting the highway, baby. Heading for that Bears exit. Except I'm actually getting off on the Bears exit because I'm meeting one Mike Branch rides at the Wawa station there who has uh, currently been waiting for me for about 15 or 20 minutes already. Hey, it's a 24 hour long trip, okay? We're gonna be riding straight for 24 hours a marathon what's 20 minutes at a gas station buddy nothing you know those motorcycles that want an extra gear on the highway you're you're in top gear and you can just tell you're like man this really wants a sixth gear this motorcycle wants two more gears at 75 miles an hour over 7,000 rpm so it, it wants a seventh gear hey what's the worst that could happen though it took me all the way across the country with almost no incident so should be able to take me on another three 3,000 mile trip, right? Right? <laughs> I freaking wobble. Oh my gosh. You know, I took this in the middle of the night through the Arizona desert and through the West Texas desert and freaking insane gusting winds. I, not, I ain't worried about it. The weeble wobbles, but it won't fall down. Headed on the highway, looking for adventure. Let's rock and roll, baby. Hell yeah, I'm really bringing the silver wing. I know you've already been waiting for 20 minutes. I swear I won't take more than 20 minutes here. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. With two assholes like this, why the hell not? It's a Florida man dad venture, baby. Mike Branch Ride, J Tree Surgeon, two crusty old 40 plus year old Hondas versus the world. Let's do it to him, baby. It's time to escape the way. Pulling over for our first gas stop. I swear to Bob, buddy. <laughs> the first 100 miles and the last 100 miles are always the hardest. Right at 102 miles right now. Ah, uh, you know, I don't always stop at exactly 100 miles. Sometimes I'll go a little bit farther, sometimes a little bit shorter, but I always start looking at 100 miles no matter what. I always start looking. And the first one to come up when I after I hit 100 is where I stop. Okay, fueled up. The guest gas stop, not our best effort, Mike. Not his fault, definitely mine. <laughs> but that's the great thing about traveling with me. When you ain't making good time, you always got someone to blame. And you can blame me, I don't mind. Got some brand spanking new Odin gloves. The new iteration of the heavy hitters to try out. Whoa, I just switched from my, uh, my MX gloves to these and I'll tell you, <laughs> on the gold wing it doesn't matter you can't feel anything through the handlebars you can barely tell the motorcycles running this gl 500 the silver wing listen up baby at 9,000 rpm going down the highway you know it's running i mean it vibrates you know not as bad as a rigid mount harley but not a, you're nowhere near as bad as my xs 650 but you definitely know and i just slept on these odin heavy hitters they got plenty of pad in the palm and it feels just fine that's gonna help a lot Only 95 miles before this stop, but I'm pretty sure this is the last stop before we go to Georgia. So uh, you gotta get a one last glizzy in Florida. Hot dogs just hit a little bit different when you're in the wang. And believe this bullshit, we stop here at the pilot and get one honest to goodness 
last glizzy in the wang. One last genuine Florida hot dog, and the hot dog roller is empty, man. No hot food at all. Freaking what a shame, dude. This used to be a great country, a wonderful country. And look at what we're coming to now. Two freaking Florida men about to be ejaculated from the wang, can't even get one last greasy hot dog off a roller. It's a shame, it's a damn shame. Not only that, all they had was them little uh, sliced up pickles. They didn't have the whole pickle. It's Van Holtons or nothing, baby. Don't slice it up. I'm confident in my sexuality. I'm complete. I'm completely secure, man. Give me the whole goddamn pickle. Stop cutting it up for me. Disappointed, dude. Freaking pilot. You guys can freaking suck it. Ugh. Well, me and Mike are escaping the Wang, but we're escaping the Wang without any hot dick-shaped food in our bellies. It's a sad day. I mean, kind of sad. <laughs> The second this motorcycle starts moving again, taking me out of the way, now all of a sudden, I don't feel so sad anymore. Life ain't bad, and there's other glizzy goblin stations out there. I think we'll make it, boys. I think we're gonna escape the Wang. Two Florida men escaping the Wang, being smeared across the face of America. Woo, baby. Shade Tree Surgeon and Mike Branch rides. <laughs> Spread across the nation. Hey, Georgia, you better hope Walgreens ain't out a plan B, because me and Mike are coming in raw. At 112 miles right now, and <laughs> I, I got my legs underneath me now. It's been a minute since I've done a long trip, a couple months at least. And, uh, you know, you, you get into that third leg of it, that right before your third stop, I'm like, Man, I could go 150 miles. Why am I stopping now? But <laughs> I promise you, if you're watching this and you're thinking about doing a trip, when you get to that point where you're like, oh, I could just keep on going and you, you, you feel like you don't have to stop, that's the most important time to stop. I promise you, what wears on you on the road when you're trying to do 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 miles without stopping, it's a war of attrition, baby. And you just gotta, you just gotta stop every 100 to 120 miles, no matter what. Arby's? Who goes to Arby's? Come on. How you doing, bud? Good, man. Yeah, I feel like that third one, I'm just like, all right, now I can go forever. Stop number three, and still no hot dogs on the rollers, and still no pickle in a pouch. I got them little cut up ones here again. <sighs> it's a rough life out there, man. The whole world stacked against us, Mikey. <sighs> But we shall persevere. Ramming speed, baby! Well, uh, poking speed, anyway. <laughs> oh, the plastic maggot perseveres. All right, as Mike Branch drops his shoey, don't worry, I do it all the time. Oh, no. oh wait, did it actually break? Well. Mike Branch Shoey isn't broken. I was about to be like, ha ha ha. I was like, oh shit, is it actually broken? Okay, no, it's not. All right, huge thanks to Jason Richardson. Uh, he just filled up uh, both our gas tanks. Thanks, bud. We appreciate you, man. Not only did he fill up both our gas tanks, but uh, he also put enough in there to uh, buy me a glizzy and a pickle. So we didn't, he didn't have any at this gas station. We're not freaking having great luck with that, but I'm definitely gonna be checking the next one. How is it even a road trip without pickles and hot dogs, man? It doesn't even make sense. All right, ladies and germs. It's time to run the gauntlet. It's Mike Branch Rides and Shade Tree Surgeon versus Atlanta, baby. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, Atlanta ain't gonna know what hit it. It'll be looking for us in the morning and ain't gonna find nothing but a $20 bill on the dresser and a note goodbye. And coming up next on America's Funniest Home Videos, Mike Branch tries to back a gold wing up an incline. It'd help if I got out of the way, huh? I should, before I start talking shit, <laughs> I should really make sure I'm not looking like an idiot. I should really do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not ever going to do that, but I should. Come on, you can do it. You're the little the little engine that could. <laughs> I think you can. I think you can. Oh, you got the reverse. Cheater. All right, speaking of I think I can, come on, Turd Ferguson. Show them what you got. The Silver Wing doesn't so much accelerate as it just vibrates at enough of a frequency that it achieves forward motion. It doesn't really accelerate, it gathers momentum. Atlanta, here we come. Well, maybe what I meant instead of 
run the gauntlet through Atlanta. We are going to slowly idle our way in first and second gear through the gauntlet in Atlanta. Oh, I mean, pretty much the same thing though, right? And just like that, we are out of Atlanta and things are starting to look absolutely gorgeous. Heading out through Georgia to Alabama, which in my opinion is one of the most beautiful states in the entire country. Uh, at least one that's close to Florida anyway. Oh man, it don't take long to get out of Atlanta and just get into absolute beauty, does it? I'm born again, the sun has risen, baby. And just being able to see that far, even though I know we're going to the mountains, we're gonna be able to see a whole lot farther. Let's me know we have truly escaped the Wang. Alabama, baby. Well, not Alabama. Brooks and Dunn. But we're in Alabama. Let's go, baby. God, I love Alabama. You know, I really do. I really think it's just one of the most beautiful states in the country. And maybe it's just because I see it so often because I'm always seeing Alabama when I leave Florida. I'm just never, never failed to be amazed by how gorgeous it is. I'll be honest too, I don't even know what city this is. I think it's, uh, I think this is Birmingham? I'm not sure. <laughs> God, I'm, I am the literal worst. Cause I know that we probably have people who watch the channel live in Birmingham. I'm sorry guys. I, all I do is follow the little box. I never know where I am half the time. But I think this is Birmingham. About to leave Alabama behind, heading to Tennessee, baby. Wish we were staying there longer, man. I've, I've ridden through Tennessee a couple times, not through any of the interesting parts, unfortunately. But uh, I've never just, it just hadn't come up that I've had a chance to stay there yet. I want to do the Dragon, obviously. I want to go to Dollywood. Back road moto, back road Billy. You know, the real fry drive now, the Valentine collection, a man of many other talents. <laughs> of course, he lives in he lives in Tennessee, but man, I just never had a chance to go there. But I guess, you know what? There it goes. You make your chances. I'm making time to do this. So I got to make some time to go to Tennessee. This little 500cc bike took me out here. And we ain't even close to where we're going yet, brother. But it took us out here. 500cc's of pure fury, baby. The silver wing, Turd Ferguson strikes again. A $1,200 motorcycle exploding down the highway. 40 screaming horsepower. Woo, come on, man. Any bike's an adventure bike. All you gotta do is get on it, point it in the right direction, twist the throttle, and have yourself an adventure. What did I do to deserve such beauty, such grandeur, just laid out like a carpet in front of me? I did absolutely nothing to deserve this, but I'm here and I'm experiencing it, so I'm gonna take it. I don't know what that thing is, but I want one. A vixen. Yeah, what a pretty ride there. Oh, dude, that was so freaking good, man. That's exactly why we did it. I cannot believe that it took us almost all the way to freaking Mississippi or, you know, Tennessee, wherever we are, to find a gas station with roller dogs. What a shame. But as they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, me and Mike are finally full of dick shaped meat. <laughs> Dick-shaped food, I should say. When you say dick-shaped meat, it sounds worse somehow. <laughs> anyway, we're on the uh, Alabama-Mississippi border, about to cross over. We're about to do several states in a row here. Yeah, about to do good. like uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee, and Arkansas. We'll be all just fall right down. We're in Missouri. All right, about to say goodbye to Alabama. It's been absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Holy mackerel. Uh. That doesn't look great. What in the hell happened? Was it an explosion? It looks like something exploded. Dude, that, that has to have been an explosion. Look at it. What the hell? Oh my God, look at the truck. Holy crap. Oh my God, dude. I can't imagine. Oh my God, that looks terrifying. 
I, I don't know if it burned down or if it just exploded like that. If it exploded like that, I can't imagine that the driver survived, but I hope he did. I hope no one's hurt too badly from that. That looked absolutely horrible. Mississippi, baby! Woo! Come on! <laughs> I love how they immediately changed the roads. They're like, yo, you're in Mississippi now, baby. The roads are beige. <laughs> right there at the state line, too. That's wild. I'm sure people who live in Mississippi know why that is, but I have no idea, but I think it's really neat. Well, uh, I'm at 126 miles. It stands to reason so is uh, Mike Branch back there, and we're getting close to running out of gas. I don't know when the next gas station is, so... <laughs> I do ha I have a little bit extra but I don't know how far it's gonna get either one of these bikes I am pretty sure my I'm, I'm gonna start sputtering at any moment have to hit my reserve All right, crisis narrowly averted well I mean it turns out there wasn't much of a crisis but anyway still I mean I think I, I was closer to crisis than you I have my little spare tank but uh man Mississippi's got some spread out gas stations gas stations with no power and then gas stations that are like demolished gas stations that aren't built yet i'm like holy moly dude Whew, how long we've we been riding like 14 15 hours 16 hours i'm ready for a beer i am beyond ready for a beer all right i remember i did uh two iron butts in a row on this thing in, in so many days when i was riding across the country all of a sudden i'm doing one on it now and i'm just like i don't remember how i did two of those in a row just a few months ago i'm just like i'm ready for a beer now we still got a couple hundred miles left so now here's the question am i in misery or what is this is this it have i made it to misery you guys will have to tell me maybe i was in missouri back there maybe that was mississippi but now I'm definitely in Arkansas. Let's rock and roll. We're finally here. Woo! It's like how crazy all these states look right, right over the state line. And they're just like, ah, oh, we're just gonna go ahead and make everything look completely different right here. Some low flying planes over there. Oh, they're crop dusting. Okay. When you see a low flying plane like that in Florida and they're dropping some off the back of it, <laughs> it means something entirely different than when you see it in Arkansas. 10 miles away from where we're stopping tonight, like I always say, it's the first hundred and the last hundred are awful. And I'm playing a dangerous game right now. I do not want to stop again until we're stopping for the night. I'm hurting. I'm tired. I don't care. There's 144 miles on this tank right now. We got 11 miles to the left. We're rolling the dice on this one. Passing that gas station right by. Seven miles. We can do it. Mike actually said he wanted to stop at a gas station. No way, man. We're not doing it. I know he's probably back there going, God damn it. Please don't, after riding over a thousand miles for 18 hours plus straight, please don't make me push this bike. You know what? The, the powers that be would never make two Florida men push these bikes in Arkansas, okay? They wouldn't dare. We didn't get rained on once the whole time, and we ain't running out of gas. Nothing bad ever happens to the bad guys. Like we always say, God loves an idiot. Oh, this is Little Rock. Never been here. Looks pretty damn cool to me, though. Hell yeah. This whole downtown area with this bridge looks freaking amazing. Yeah, this looks exactly right up my alley. Very cool. Also, this would be a very bad place to run out of gas. <laughs> There's, there is no shoulder. <laughs> I bet you didn't think I was gonna make it. <laughs> I told you nothing could go wrong. It didn't rain on us. Nothing could go wrong, man. I'm lucky, I'm blessed. Nothing bad ever happens to me. <laughs> I always get away with it. I've got so much luck, it's stupid, man. Got away with it again. Covered. Oh, this is fleet services. <laughs> this is for fleet vehicles. <laughs> watch it, watch me run out of gas like right as we pull out. Oh, perfect. It was right down the street. Past like 10 accidents on I 40. Like, there was literally like 10 accidents on the way in here in like 25 miles. And then you look at the freaking parking lot in here. This whole place looks like a freaking demolition derby. I think it's just Arkansas, man. <laughs> I'm just like looking around here. I'm like, it's just Arkansas, man. <laughs> I don't know what's up with y'all. You guys are freaking wilding out. Dude, downtown Little Rock is freaking gorgeous. I love this. This is great. 
Besides every car looking like it just got out of a demolition derby, you know, it's really nice. I just want to tell you guys, Mike Branch is old. He wanted to stop. You know, I wanted to keep on going and go all the way to Eureka. You know, like, hey, we only did like 1,100 miles. No big deal, Mike. But he was just like, ah, you know, I'm just feeling old and bald. And, uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to push him too hard, okay? I don't want to push him too hard. We're going to go ahead and stop. I'm, I'm big like that, okay? All right, we'll see if I can find our hotel without having to... Is this a one-way? Oh, only one way to find out. Dude, for like Thursday at 6 o'clock, there's almost no traffic down here. I don't I don't, I don't, be, I don't be trusting people from Arkansas right now, okay? I've seen your cars, okay? Valet. Very fancy. Yeah, go ahead. And... Valet Turd Ferguson. I don't know if they're going to let you park that POS here, dude. Okay. This is for nice bikes only. Valet. Hey, I know where every scratch is on this, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm whipped right now. So, huh? Are you sure? No, you know, I don't need you to prove it to me. I just asked if you're sure or not. Uh, anyway, so I'm absolutely freaking whipped. We're in downtown Little Rock Night now, which reminds me a lot of downtown Tampa, except nobody's here. <laughs> and the place is so freaking cool. The, this AC Little Rock Hotel is so freaking awesome. And there's all sorts of so cool gastro pubs and breweries everywhere. And I'm just like, dang, dude, I like this. This is like Tampa 10 years ago, or maybe even 15 years ago at this point, where you had a bunch of cool stuff and uh, it wasn't overrun with assholes. So uh, right now, really digging downtown Little Rock. I think we're gonna come back here. I like this a lot. Mike's going on about how it looks like ever like every other southern city, which is uh, true, I guess, to a certain degree. Um, but like you say, it looks like every other southern city, including the Monte Carlo on Dubs, baby. That is a staple of every southern downtown. How much you want to bet they call him the Candy Cane Man? This motherfucker looks at this whole ass menu and goes, I think I'm gonna get the marinated chicken breast. I'm like, all right, Susan. <laughs> Who oh, did you don't order chicken at a restaurant? Who orders chicken at a restaurant? You eat chicken because you have to. Right. I want to. <laughs> what? Who wants to eat a chicken breast? No, you order the steak. Bacon wrap filet. What are you, stupid? Okay, well, okay, we'll do bacon wrap filet. <laughs> Apparently, uh, queso was invented in Eure or wait, not Eureka Springs, in Little Rock. Um, I always thought it was in Mexican, but uh, how do I know, dude? I don't really care who invented it, but there's a whole lot of queso on the menu. And it's delicious. I just want to point out something about the queso capital of the world. Normally when you eat queso at a restaurant, you're like, there's enough for not even one person. There's enough for a small child. Me and Mike have been going at this, and we still got entrees coming, and it's still like, full. it's still full. There's still layers down there, baby. Uh, they ain't messing around here. You can put more on the chip. You're doing that thing where there's not enough, where you don't put a lot on the chip because there isn't a lot of cheese. There's so much. It looks like black eyed It looks like hot lava is what it looks like. Yeah, oh, I thought you were about to stick it in your mouth. I, like I was like, you fool. I'm messing up the portion for the video shoot, dude. It's okay. All right, well, Mike Branch uh, got the chicken breast. I did. I mean, sorry, Susan Branch got the chicken breast. Hey, I, I got lamb. If you're going to come out to a restaurant and you're going to eat something, it's either get the steak, get God's favorite food. <laughs> oh my god, it just smells really good. You're lucky. You're fucking lucky. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, you're really lucky. Because yeah, it is very good. Uh, we're captured. Out of control. Oh my god, it's sweet. Oh yeah. I'm eating right. You, Mike was putting it on his plate. What a polite lady he is, Susan. Susan. Mac and cheese is good. What was his grits? Yeah, that's grits. Collard greens. Oh my god, the grits is so good. Alright, it is the cold, hard morning. And we're with our friends, the one and only Timmy Stick, who we were having pickles on yesterday <laughs> with his brand new uh, Indian Knot Challenger, but it fucking damn sure looks like one. Homemade backrest with that top box right there that you can lean up into. This is actually an Indian part, this front part right here. But uh, I'm impressed, man. You, you've come a long way since that freaking riding that 883 on an iron butt all the way down to Tampa. Let me tell you what, dude. You fucking earned it. You do an iron butt on an 883 from Arkansas to the back door of the dirty shame. You earned you earned a bigger bike, bud. Yeah. Uncle Bullgator over here is loading up the loading up the green gold wing. I got the Malaise era turd Ferguson almost loaded up. We're gonna grab some breakfast. Unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna rain all weekend, so we got some figuring to do. The journey continues. Man, both y'all are short. That means I get to be Gandalf and y'all are hobbits. All right. Freaking Gimli and 
I don't know. Was there a bald one? Your bald one, you get to be an orc. I ain't Gandalf, I'll tell you. I smell way more like Radagast the brown than I do like Gandalf the gray. When I say the journey continues, uh, it's the journey to breakfast that's continuing right now. And Malibu Cafe. Judging from the amount of people in there, I think it's going to be good. Can you still put coins in them? They took all the coin ones away in Tampa. Perfect, man. 50 cents an hour. Perfect. Cash still works in some places. Malibu Cafe. Doesn't hurt as bad because Mike Branch, Uncle Bullgator over here, picked up his little, his uh, two youngins. Meals over here. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle. <laughs> Lucky he picked it up because, uh, unfortunately, the, the much feared review of it'll make a turd applies to Malibu Cafe. Well, it's not supposed to rain till about four o'clock, so we got some time. Before the rain comes, we can see some nice roads. So even if we got to just spend the whole weekend drunk in a cabin, that's all right. We'll have a good time getting up there. Damn, look at old Timmy stick go on that Indian there. He is freaking loaded for bear on that thing. That is loaded up. Full-size camping chair, sleeping bag, tent, the whole freaking deal, man. Dude, I just looked at how much stuff you have loaded on that thing. That's freaking awesome. Little rock is just really really cool it's beautiful the architecture is beautiful there's cool though i mean maybe not the malibu cafe ain't the best but there's cool little pubs and breweries and restaurants everywhere we're definitely coming back to little rock i think what sometime soon or sometime in the next uh maybe this summer if we have time we're gonna fly out here rent a bike just ride the mountains for a few days but then like make our base camp here in little rock every night because I, I don't know, man. I'm loving it out here. I think it's freaking beautiful and amazing. And, you know, I've only been spent one night here, but I'm sold. Little Rock's got it going on. Another gas stop where Shade Tree Surgeon took way too long, as per usual. All right, another 100 miles on the demolition derby that is I-40. <laughs> and then it's time for some nice roads. I was complaining about I-40. I'll tell you, probably like 10 miles outside of Little Rock. This road gets awful beautiful as well. We got the mountains there in the distance, some nice big sweeping curvy roads, absolutely gorgeous scenery and trees, and it's just the anticipation is building. We're about to be in the Ozarks, maybe, and it feels good, and this is like the appetizer. A warning for all you would-be travelers who want to have a delicious ice-cold beer at a scenic overlook while you're doing the pig trail. Clarksville is dry. <laughs> Luckily, we already have some beer, so we'll get to still have a delicious ice-cold beer at a scenic overlook on the pig trail, but we couldn't get any more than we already have. All right, boys, pig trail, here we come. Hey, remember, this is my first time riding with you. I have no idea what your skill level is, so remember, just ride your own ride. Although, I'm not going to be going hauling ass or nothing. I'm not trying to say that you don't know what you're doing. You get, you get me? I'm really excited. I mean, not about the dry county. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> I mean, she's like, you go in there, and they're like, yeah, we can't serve beer. It's a dry county. I'm just like, what, what year is it? That, that seemed a little aggressive. <laughs> well, here we go. 500 cc's of pure fury turd ferguson is gonna climb the pig trail of course uh the last time i did it it was on a gold wing with one working carburetor so they're about evenly matched when it comes to climbing abilities oh. and then all of a sudden it was all worth it that thousand miles we did <laughs> not, not that it wasn't fun i had fun i like i like doing long distances i'll tell you i was pretty whooped afterwards that, that hit me hard but man this is what makes it worth it crooked and steep next 20 miles i like it baby although i don't know if the, i don't know if this 500 cc v twin's gonna like it but you ain't got a choice all right turd ferguson you ain't got a choice climbing up dude i've been on this road for freaking five minutes and i already can just see into this entire valley over there amazing the mountains never cease to amaze me. You always gotta wonder if the Honda engineers who designed this little CX-500 who decided to take this utilitarian engine that runs more like a generator or a water pump than it does a motorcycle engine, and then after making that, decided to just slap a touring disguise on it like this little fairing and some tiny bags you can barely fit anything into. I wonder if when the Honda engineers decide, designed this, probably as just like a commuter bike or maybe a day trip bike, I wonder if they really thought anyone would ever be taking it on cross-country trips across America into the mountains and all this crazy stuff. I gotta imagine not. This is definitely not what this bike was designed to do, but you know what? Doing the right job with the wrong tool 
that's always just kind of fun to me. I'll tell you this though, when it comes to having fun on two wheels, in my mind, <laughs> just like they say, every tool's a hammer if you swing it hard enough. And there ain't no wrong tool for the job when it comes to having a good time on a motorcycle. I mean, although you're not gonna accelerate hard up any of these inclines, as long as you're in the right gear, it's not like it can't handle them. It's got plenty enough ass to do it. If you're a five and you're trying to get with a 10, it's not like it's impossible. Uh, you just gotta come after it the right way. As the old saying goes, when I twist this throttle wide open, it's way more fun to try and go fast on a slow bike than it is to go slow on a fast bike. I, I used to always wonder what the hell that meant because all I could afford was a slow bike and all I wanted was a fast bike. And now that I've had fast bikes, man, I get it. Feel my ears popping. We're climbing, baby, we climbing. Not bad for a $1,200 motorcycle, huh? <laughs> Not to mention a $1,200, 500cc, 40-plus-year-old motorcycle. Not bad. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> One thing the GL 1500 definitely has over the Silver Wing, the Gold Wing's got way way better brakes than this thing does. <laughs> these these are just not up to the task of downhill. So <laughs> if you're coming in way too hot to a turn downhill, <laughs> don't be counting on these brakes to save your bacon. Oh, gorgeous. Come on, baby. Wow. Laid out here, this tapestry, just for us. The problem with this silver wing is it handles, it does handle just fine. Like the chassis is good. The problem is, is this front suspension is so wallowy. If the road conditions are anything but like glass smooth, and most of them out here are, then you are not feeling confident in a turn. Like any road variations in a turn, and this front end is all over the place. Some beef boys. Oh. Just baby with a babbling brook Smith Creek just flowing down there. Oh my gosh. When you're a Florida boy surrounded by beaches, swamps, mosquitoes and gators and pythons and boas and rattlesnakes like me coming up here, it just seems like a whole different world out of some elven fairy tale. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Come on baby, turn Ferguson. Attack the mountain! We're wide open throttle here, baby! We're getting steeper and steeper! So far, so good, though. I think it's more than up to the task. Well, uh, scratch that. I think it's up to the task. I don't think it's up to more than this task. I think we found, like, it's peak task. If you were asking any more of it than I'm asking right now, I don't think it would be happening. Now, well, being behind a truck with rocks and gravel in it like this is not the most fun thing in the world on a motorcycle. But you can tell whoever's driving this truck probably drives this road a lot because they ain't slowing down for any of these curves. It's funny because you come out, I've seen this before, you come out to roads like this that trucks go down too, and there'll be some mom in a Subaru wagon going 10 miles under the speed limit. Meanwhile, a dude with a full with a full load of rock and gravel is freaking doing 10 over and <laughs> asking her to get out of the way. I wish it was green. I'm so used to everything being green. I'm spoiled, so I'm from Florida. So when I, whenever I see something and it's brown like that, just coming, coming out of the window, I'm like, what's wrong? What happened? Is this fern gully? Did they, did they drain? Did they mess up the forest? Did they drain all the color out of it? Oh yeah, this guy definitely knows this road. He was already freaking engine braking before he even came to this downhill. Of course, I don't know anything about driving big trucks like that. What's the, with the engine braking downhill? Is that just because the brakes can just get overheated so fast or something? I really have no idea. Or is it just a save on pad life because it uses up so much more? Because it's so heavy? I don't know. I know there's truckers, I know there's, we got a lot of truckers in the comments, so I'm sure someone will be able to tell me. I, I love this truck knows these roads so well that I swear to God that semi up there is really not even slowing us down. <laughs> he's, 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 for like a motorcycle right now, the pace that he's going in that big old truck is basically like a nice pace for, for a motorcycle who doesn't want to get bent out of shape. Like it ain't bad. Whoa. 
boy racers, let's go. A whole, a whole crew of speedy boys, all right. He's gonna let us go, cool, good man. Good dude. All right, well, I'm gonna make this quick because the wind's probably destroying everybody's ears right now, but we put off next to this lake, or sorry, lake, this river over here, and my man Timmy and Mikey over here, Uncle Bull Gator, and we uh, had a couple of warm beers because what's a motorcycle ride without stopping for a beer, okay? We're in the mood for a cold beer. <laughs> so let's, let's go ahead and get to the cat house. On the road again, baby. I can't, my GoPro died somewhere on the road, so I'm not sure how much of the uh, first part of the pig trail I missed, but uh, let me give you my review. It was great. Okay, back at it, man. There's cold beer for us waiting at the cat house. That's gonna make doing this just a little bit easier and a little more fun, knowing there's a nice cold beer at the end of it. The little Honda that could, baby. The silver wing cannot be stopped, Turd Ferguson. Oh my gosh, Turd Ferguson when you were but a little baby in 1982. Did you ever imagine this is where you'd end up one day? Up cross country trips, top of mountains, the bottom of valleys, living your life in the swamp. It's a crazy old world for a little silver wing from the 80s, isn't it? Ah, oh, what did I do to deserve this? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Feels better that way when I don't deserve it at all. I'm just gonna take it. All these gorgeous roads, all these good friends, all these good times and amazing luck. I don't deserve any of this. If I got what I deserved, I'd be struck dead by lightning right about now. Okay, no lightning? Let's proceed as usual. The silver wing has taken me to such great heights. Thank you, seriously. Thank you to Honda Engineering for making such a funny, quirky little bike and then taking something that's bizarre to begin with and being like, hey, why don't we put a touring fairing on it? Why the hell not? And these are the kind of adventures it's taken me on? <laughs> not bad at all. Not bad at all. And you know what I've had to do to it so far? Change the oil. Literally not one other thing. All I've ever done to this bike since I picked it up is change the oil. And just like that, we're in Eureka Springs, baby. Let's see if I can remember my way around Eureka Springs enough to find the cat house. I think I think I remember where I am because I remember turning down this street before and going like, where the hell am I going? And it's going to it is going to the downtown Eureka. Oh my gosh, this place is just so freaking cool, man. Oh, Shay's got to come here. She love all these trees with the purple. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's the cat house. She'd love all these trees with the purple blossoms like that. She'd be so freaking into it. Well, I wonder if we're gonna know any of these people who are here. Probably not. Eureka Springs is a gigantic biker, uh, has a gigantic biker population. So, uh, stands the reason that we won't actually know them. All right, just called the campground and guess what, boys? We got till eight to check in. <laughs> so it's time to drink one of them ice cold beers, maybe two. My man. <laughs> You're the man. Oh, give me a break, dude. Let me tell you what, my man Jerry here, he went through hell and high water to be here right now. When you hung out with somebody in different states, different times over the past two years, when this crusty dude on an absolutely beautiful fat boy rolled up to the dirty shame, I never knew it would be like this. But it's like this, so we having a good time, brother. Friendship, bro. <laughs> I mean, I uh. Dead. Oh, I knew it was going to happen. I charged it before we left, but it's been going dead. So I was just like, ah, it's going to happen eventually. You know what is going to happen, though? It's going to need this every time unless I charge it. There we go. Be prepared to bring it out again. <laughs> that ain't the last time that thing's coming out. <laughs> yeah, good luck turning that thing around. Always good hanging out at the cat house, but yeah, we got kind of a big group. So the Rowdy Beaver is definitely the spot for a bigger crowd. I was like going, is like, is that the street? I got my GPS and I'm like, this don't look like a street. This looks like an alley. Pretty awesome place like Eureka Springs. Just even just driving around downtown is like an adventurous twisty road experience. I love it. Oh, I'm down to, I think I can, I think I can. Oh, there go those rain clouds. We knew it was gonna rain. I guess it's just a matter of when. There's that bullshit ass natural bridge. It's a freaking hole in the ground. <laughs> 
Just hearing series series say rowdy beaver. <laughs> just made my freaking day. So I was so damn hungry that uh, I didn't even take time to film. I promise you it was good. All right, the crew's all here. Don't be looking forward to a whole lot more video after this because uh, we're about to get drunk and have some fun. And that's when I put the camera down. I don't put it down because I'm afraid of what we're doing. I've been, I ain't afraid of nothing until I need to be. <laughs> uh, I'll just forget because we're having a good time. Could it even be Eureka Springs without the one, the only TC? Crap! I mean, uh, we love you, brother. Without, <laughs> without TJ, the only one, baby. Oh my God! What you, what you, what you hiding up there? Am I getting it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was looking for the G spot. <laughs> we got TJ. We got Steph over here. Let me tell you what. Here, let me tell you something cool about TJ right now. I'm such an asshole. That, oh, here, uh, the real fat man and Bullseye just showed up. I know those motherfuckers party. I literally just called TJ like 20 minutes ago. I was like, where are you? He goes, downtown we're coming let me tickle underneath that tickle in between that beard real quick a few more times you might be coming real hard dude <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, TJ took us this, this one, honorary one over here. Yes, I and did. And it, it looks like you're taking us back to get our liver removed, which well, I like. actually, this is the, where the hobbits are. <laughs> tells you this is like a hobbit Whoa. fucking house. Yeah, bong rips for Bilbo, baby. <laughs> dude, damn, dude. This is fucking cool. I dropped my fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be my trend. I'm gonna leave the whole thing in there and get everyone dizzy. What are you doing? I got cash. All right, well, they ID everyone here, which I can appreciate because I ID everyone at the shame. But uh, Tim Mystic's got my ID. Timmy Stick. I believe in you, dude. I didn't want to walk up that hill myself, dude. I know you can do it. you can do it. I feel your pain, dude. You believe all these stairs? It's so fun. Fun, it's like you're going on a Disney ride. It's like an adventure. This is a bullshit. It's like a place me and my wife. I like it. He should not be behind everybody. The one yeah, he said. <laughs> he asked, hey, let me be in the back. I'm going down. I'm taking all you motherfuckers with me. All right, let me tell you what. TJ, the honorary one, is taking to us a, a very special place. We had to climb several stairs here. We've had to traverse gulches, valleys, uh, dangerous places, trolls, elves, and goblins. I was just telling Chase, man, I like it when, when stuff gets uh, messed up, when when things get hard, when it gets tough. It just makes me more excited to do it. There ain't no story if everything goes perfectly according to plan. You know, it's got to be shitty, rainy, flat tires, charging system going out on your motorcycle. Chase was like, I want everything to be good. <laughs> I was like, well, that, well, that sucks, dude. <laughs> Welcome to your new life. Yeah. It's not fun and everything sucks. Hey, Chase. I got yes. I'm here to wreck everything and ruin your life. Wonderful. God sent me. I'm so <laughs> Man, this place is freaking beautiful, dude. I'm glad I thought of coming here.
<laughs> was it, whose idea was this? Was it mine? No, I don't think. I think it was. I think it was you, Mike. It was, a scooter, I think. was it? Someone's in trouble. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. You know, they really got everything here, and and uh, I almost called it Asheville. They really got everything here in Eureka Springs. Even a store just for me, dude. Everything is like these little alleys and stuff like that everywhere. There's like a little mystery around every corner, man. I love it when you go to a restaurant. They already have appetizers on the table waiting for you. Baby, I got the veggie grits, except, uh, you know, always order off the menu. Veggie grits sounded amazing, but I put bacon and eggs on it. We got my man over here with the omelet, Chase, Mud Street, not disappointed, all right? Fucking bullseyes over here. You guys got that, that hungry man breakfast. Normal shit. All right, let's see how good the grits are. Oh my gosh, this looks freaking amazing. It does look so good. I'm having my vegetables in the morning too. Mm. Mike, you missed out, dude. Mike, don't eat grits. I don't eat grits. Oh, man, you're missing out. It's delicious. Freaking pull the camera back out, man. These are so freaking good, dude. I can spit. Mm. Delicious, dude. Oh, my God, I feel amazing. I feel good. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. It's a beautiful day. It's a great day to be alive, man. Come on. To ride with them. <laughs> Has to be stairs. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, wait. I'm not invited. Hell yeah. <laughs> with our powers combined. Anyway, Mud Street Cafe. Amazing. Beautiful. Good. The service was amazing. In fact, the service everywhere uh, down here. The hospitality in Little Rock was amazing. The hospitality in Eureka Springs is amazing. The place was just slam packed busy. And when your waitress comes up and still pleasant and doesn't rush you when the place is that busy, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm an outlaw. I was an outlaw. Hey, Bullseye tells me you're only allowed to have no more than six dildos in Texas. That's right. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude. George Orwell was right. 1984 is here. Overthrow your masters. Can you believe you can only have six dildos in Texas anyway? This place is beautiful. <laughs> I was hoping my battery magically came back to life last night. <sighs> it didn't. Perfect. Have to save, man. Dude, I will, man. You guys be safe, all right? Love y'all. So the GoPros are gonna make it look not steep at all, but I promise you this, this, uh, oh shit. Yeah, this uh, parking lot is something else. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Eureka Springs is steep. Oh, I love it, man. 1200 bucks is taking me across the country and back. All right, now for the big boy, dude. We were the easy ones. Mike Branch over there with the barge. I love Brady, freaking fat man back there just documenting it for posterity. <laughs> I believe in you, Mike. Yeah, I did this last time I was here too. I wish I just had more time to spend in Eureka Springs. I just like, it's a me thing. It is just so hard for me to spend more than one night in a town. Like I just like, I, I spend one night, I'm just like, oh, this is so cool. I want to see so many things. But then after one night, I'm like, I'm ready to go. The, the wanderlust is back. Let's rock and roll. Time to move on. There's just so many cool places. Like, like this place right here, the bathhouse. Come on, man. Palace Hotel. I'm going to try and stay in that one next time. That sounds cool. All right, boys, get ready for a steep one. Morning. Let's hope there is nobody coming because we ain't stopping very well. <laughs> Uncle Bullgator back there with the land barge. That's a tight turn, buddy. There's so many cool restaurants and shops. Just walking around here, man. It just is really something else. Morning. Everybody smiles at you. That's nice. That's what I always say, man. Being nice is free. But to stop because uh, Whiskey Chaser over here is going to put a sticker on the cat house door. And once again, because I'm there. Oh, look at her two wheel stickers up there right next to Mike Branch. Oh my gosh, Mike Branch's sticker is here? Damn, dude, it's really got everybody. With that awful logo. With that awful logo? Oh, I keep busting him up about his logo. You know whose sticker isn't up there? One of mine because I never remember to bring any with me. All right, on the road again, baby. Sad to leave, but I love to go. It's like you hate leaving because this is such a cool place place i hate to leave it but i love riding my motorcycle <laughs> so i'm just like so we gotta go baby <laughs> i love that little ri that little river down there underneath the bridges i love urban fantasy so i love looking down there and being like oh it's such an old town there must be like sprites and elves and other creatures dwelling among the cracks and crevices of eureka springs trolls and goblins and orcs in the woods 
I don't know, man, I got a big imagination. We might all be badass bikers, man, but I still love reading stories about dragons, you know what I mean? Dragons, magicians, and spaceships. That's my jam, baby. Just as gorgeous leaving as it was coming. God, this is just a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? Oh my gosh. You see? This is why we had to leave. We had to leave Eureka Springs. Because if we didn't leave, we wouldn't be getting this right now. Flying down this curvy road with that babbling brook right next to you. I didn't even, I didn't even put in uh, earbuds for this. I know you usually ride with earphones in. I didn't even bother putting them in for this. It's just so beautiful. I want to enjoy it without any music in my ears. And I'll tell you, the, the old GL500, the Silverwing, Turd Ferguson right here, the noise that the motor makes is, would not be exactly described as the most pleasant sounding motorcycle ever. It just sounds a little anemic, wheezy, and or and like it's breaking. It always sounds like it's breaking. People are like, your motorcycle sounds like it's knocking. No, nope, that's just how it sounds. But it's still the sound of an engine, and it's still the sound of the engine that's pushing me down these beautiful roads, and I absolutely love it. You know, I don't mind electric vehicles. They don't bother me. I think electric motorcycles are really cool, but just, man, I'm really gonna miss something about the vibration and the sound of an engine. Just not even the screaming sound of a loud V-twin, just something like this, just this, there's this little, this little tiny work of art underneath me. This little engineering feat, this masterpiece, you know? Even the crappiest engine, even the, the engine that you don't care about is still just standing on top of thousands of years of human evolution, ingenuity, and hard work. And this masterpiece, this testament to the will of man is pushing me along this beautiful road right now. I can feel it thumping and moving and burning fuel and the oil sloshing around. The pistons are going up and down a mile a minute and it's just carting my fat ass down these beautiful roads. And that's a good feeling. It's a beautiful feeling. And I guess, you know, if you never experience it and all you know is electric bikes, maybe you won't miss it, but I'm going to. I really feel like we're experiencing the last gas of the internal combustion engine. And it is what it is. All things end. All things change. You, know, you can't make them stay the same. You, know, you can whinge on about it and cry and fight, but life marches on no matter what you do. I'm just glad that we get to enjoy it. I'm glad that I'm here and I get to enjoy both the onset of electric vehicles and electric motorcycles and this last gasp of gasoline engines that we're experiencing right now. We live in a really special time and place. And I know this world is ever changing and there's a lot of heartache and horrible things that happen in it on a regular basis. But I want, sometimes I just think about that. This amazing time and place that we live in right now where things are so freaking easy for me that I have a little, a little box on my bike handles that's telling me where to go. I've got this gasoline engine with gas stations everywhere where I can just move across the country at will for pennies. For pennies it costs to operate this motorcycle. And I get to share it all with all of you and I get to make the world such a smaller place through YouTube and these stupid cameras. And it just makes me feel good. I'm so, I feel so lucky. I feel like one of the luckiest people in the freaking world that I get to experience everything that's happening right now now i don't know i i mean i'm i'm literally overcome i'm sitting here overcome and i'm you know i'm about to sit here freaking about to shed a single manly tear on in the mountains of eureka a memento for the ozarks leaving behind a small part of myself to mix in with the beautiful springs of eureka leaving my last bit of sentimentality one final tear for eureka springs will not have enough of a charge to start nope On the road again. Poor Chase didn't even take his helmet off, man. <laughs> I know. Dude, if I wasn't a total narcissistic piece of shit who only thinks about himself and nobody else's comfort, I would feel bad. We can do it. I believe in us. <laughs> All right, almost there. We're closer than we've ever been to hitting the road, I promise. Once more, with gusto. They was all worried we were gonna get rained on. I already told them it wouldn't dare rain on us. Not on Shade Tree Surgeon. Everything's gonna be sunshine and lollipops for me, all right? It's a state of mind, all right? All you gotta do is truly believe it. If you truly believe it, then everything just kinda works out, don't it? And if it looks like it ain't gonna work out, just make it work out. The secret to success is to, is to constantly let 
your idea of what success is be in flux. And if you can uh, roll with the punches and have a different idea of success once the parameters change, then baby, come on, you're always gonna win. That's why I'm always so confident. That's why I know I'm gonna win. I know I'm gonna come out on top. I just, sometimes I gotta readjust where I think top is. I love this big old downhill like this, right to an uphill. I just feel like I'm about to take off, grow wings, and fly away to reach parts unknown in outer space. See what the poontang is like in the Dimension X. Even with this gray sky, still gorgeous. I usually think I can find beauty in just about everything. Looks like I can have a good time just about anywhere. Yeah, you know, I could be the guest of honor in the dick kicking competition. I could probably still find something I liked about it. It might be hard, but I'll try. I don't know, man. I don't know if I got any secrets or if it is a secret, but adjusting what your idea of success is, managing expectations, and just looking at what you got right in front of you and trying to have the best time you can with it, man. It's always worked pretty damn well for me. I think I'm gonna leave it off there, boys, as we leave the Ozarks and on to the next adventure. Huge thanks to everybody who came and met us in Eureka Springs. It was, I didn't put this ride together. This was the Discord boys did it. So this was uh, mainly uh, mainly my man, Crazy Cooter. Great dude, and he put this whole thing together. Huge thanks to you, man. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come out here again anytime soon if it wasn't for you, brother. Awesome getting to see TJ, the honorary one, and Steph again. Great people, and I just felt like I got to know him so much better on this trip. And all the boys from the Discord, man, just good, good people. Amazing people. My man, Mike Branch back there, felt like I got to know him so much better than I ever have. What always happens with all all the guys from the Discord, everybody who made it out, and Mike Branch back there, it all starts out with YouTube. You know, we, we're, we make the world a smaller place with these stupid little videos, these fun little videos, Fat Man and Bullseye, man, just like, we make these videos and we have fun making them. And if you making videos and you ain't having fun doing it, then don't do it. Because it, it should be fun at the end of everything. It should be a good time. And it just makes the world a smaller place for me. And I have so many friends now who I consider lifelong friends, real friends, that just started out like typing in something about a motorcycle into YouTube, found one of my videos, and then, you know, we, we ended up meeting up somewhere. I don't even know how it ends up happening. And now here we are. <laughs> I got friends that I'm traveling halfway across the country and back with, doing iron butts on shitty old 40 year old motorcycles. Like meeting up a, a crew of people, half of them I never even met. Some of them I've ridden be before. Now we've met up in multiple states, all the Discord boys, meeting up with them in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. Like, God damn, dude. You know, a lot of people got a lot of problems with YouTube, but I will tell you, YouTube has given me so much and I'm so thankful for it. That and motorcycles. Motorcycles and YouTube, baby. They've given me almost everything I got right now. I might not be rich, but I am definitely rich with friends. And I, I am so thankful for that. I barely even have words to describe it. Feels good. And that's gonna about do it, y'all. Till next time, keep it weird. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful is what I feel when we.